Good afternoon. We are group one of the Mechanical Design 2 class. My name is Kevin Gregorio. My name is Marisol Contreras. And my name is Carlos Sosa. The topic that we'll be discussing today is that of belt selection procedures and examples. There are a large variety of belts available in the market. Each of us will discuss a specific type of belt. V-belts offer the top combination of traction, uh, movement speed, and life. And unlike flat belts, they lack in efficiency, but make up for it by having the ability to have multiple belts on a single sheave thus making it a multiple drive. The cross-section of, uh, of a, of a V-belt is that of the trapezoid, which nomenclature you can see above. Uh, these sections are designated by an alphabet letter for inside circumference in inch dimensions. Over here we have a table of uh, each section and its dimensions. And in this one right here, we have the belt, belt length of each section. These are standard lengths. So the first thing to do when choosing a belt, you have to first have the following information handy. You have to have the type of motor that will be driving the belt system and its rated horsepower, the type of machine that will be driven, uh, the speed required to drive the application, and the service conditions, to name a few. Second step would be to determine the service factor. All right, This is determined by using the following table. You first have to select the driven machine, the type of torque applied, and the suitable service hour range. Step three would be to calculate the design power in horsepower, of course, by utilizing the following formula. And once all that information is uh, gathered, you can use the following table to find the section belt, the section of the belt, either A, B, C, or D. Step five of, the, of this process would be to find the speed ratio of the drive application by using the formula above. Step six, you select the belt size with this equation here, where C is the center distance Large D is the diameter of the large sheet. Small D is the diameter of the small sheet. Once that information is gathered, we use this table here to determine the coefficient of arc of contact. Next, we have to calculate the number of belts that are going to be needed. This is done by using this formula here, where we have all the information except the belt length coefficient, which can be uh, determined by using this chart here. And that would be all for the selection process. Now, some of the applications for these belts are very wide. They range from, you know, from being in small long lawnmowers to uh, pumps to uh, large and heavy industries like uh, mines and quarries and and cars and engines. Thank you. For my part of the presentation, I will be discussing tooth belts and round belts. Tooth belts, as seen here, are essentially flat belts with teeth along their inner diameter. These belts combine all the features of flat belts with the gripping power of teeth belts. They require no lubrication and their teeth can come either in trapezoidal or semicircular shape. The selection process of tooth belts is similar to that of feet belts. Once you've established the design conditions, you can use a selection guide table, like the one shown here, to determine the proper tooth belt to use for your application. Tooth belts are commonly found in engines. They transfer power from the crankshaft to the camshaft. They can also be used in sliding doors, like the one seen in malls, to transfer power from the motor to the doors. Round belts, like the ones shown here, are essentially symmetrical rubber tubes that operate at low levels of torque. These belts vary in size and the material. Some even come with an inner core that gives them a greater tensile strength. When selecting the right round belts to use, figuring out the proper belt length is crucial. Depending on the design parameters available, one of these equations can be used to calculate the proper belt length needed of the, for the application. Round belts are used in food processing because they are easy to clean and resistant to chemical corrosion. They can also be used in packaging conveyors to transfer power from the motors to the spinning shafts that move the boxes along the conveyor. Thank you. Continuing with the presentation, I'm going to talk about the topic flat belt. Flat belt has the surface plane in both sides and has cross-section rectangular. One of the important characteristics about the flat belt is the flexibility and the high efficiency in 98%, and the high power and speed can rotate in opposite direction. The other aspect is the geometric projection. The geometric projection presents the open belt and the closed belt. The open belt rotate in same direction and produce high friction. Not reversing open belt rotating only one position, 
This geometric position has the possibility to bear lose some tension in the open part in contrast with the reversing open bend. Now we have the reversing open bend right with different diameters of police producing more tension between them. The flat bed drive without a plane, which has to form an angle of 90 degrees between the axes. In all this procedure, it's very important the material to select the bell. The drape data present the calculation we need to do to select dimensions and factors. For that, we have to use different formulation to determine the factor of safety and the transmission of load. This example shows the more common material we use in the industry, like polyester, polyamate, and armate. And, we, and the application we have in the engine, like we can see now, is flat belt driving 160 ton press, a spinning machine, and a textile engine.